September 25th was Pope Francis's first full day in New York City, and all of Gotham was a Twitter. I was caught up in the excitement too, even though I'm Jewish. I like the guy. Part rock star, he is the anti-hubris. Part humble, he rocks the globe with his anti-materiality. He tweets in Latin. <laughs> Rumor has it he practiced his English for six months prior to his visit. And for two whole days, he would do what no elected politician who escorted him through this tough town had been able to do, unify a divided city. I planned my schedule around his schedule, hoping to catch a real-life glimpse. My day began with a client meeting at 8 in Times Square. I finished at 11.30, shook hands, and raced downtown. I hoped to see him walk across the campus at Ground Zero. Breaking all records, I made it to the office in 20 minutes. The subway was fast and the platforms empty. Surprising, given how the mayor instructed everyone to take the trains and avoid the nightmare of holy gridlock. I headed straight to the cafeteria at my office. It had an expansive view of the campus, but my colleagues informed me I was too late. I missed him by five minutes. He was already inside the museum. So I sat down at a lunch table with about 20 other people and watched the memorial service on TV. When the ceremony was over, we pressed our faces against the windows to catch him floating back across the grounds. We were all staring at the museum's entrance when we saw the pontiff's fuel-efficient fiat pulling away Pope inside. Who knew there was a secret underground tunnel? Missed him again. I only had one more chance to see him. I left the office at 4.30. I timed my subway ride to arrive at the 59th Street stop just as he would be Pope mobiling down Central Park West. <laughs> what normally takes 30 minutes took 45. The subways were crowded and slow. Everyone had the same idea. Luckily, the Pope was behind schedule too. So I waited and waited. Still no Pope. Where was he? Did he stop at Starbucks for a latte? I was exhausted from chasing him around town. Too many subway steps and too high a heel lugging too heavy a laptop. My unusually long commute and the Pope's delay put me behind schedule. My family and I were having Shabbat dinner at a friend's further uptown and we would undoubtedly hit papal traffic. I decided to turn around and go home. So you may be wondering why a Jewish girl from Manhattan's Upper West Side would be so intent on seeing the Pope. After all, I could watch him on TV while sitting on my couch, drinking my own latte. Ever since my cancer diagnosis, I had been trying to figure out what faith looked like, what spirituality meant to me and to others. I had faith in the science to heal me, but what about faith in the faith? As I stood waiting in the crowd, I realized I didn't need to catch a glimpse of the Pope to understand faith. I saw it that afternoon in the people lined up on the avenue looking for the same glimpse. I marveled at their unwavering spirit and unabridged joy. Parents holding up their babies hoping to make eye contact. Seniors in wheelchairs hoping to be blessed. Even enchanted teenagers holding up their iPhones hoping to post to Facebook. I witnessed spirituality all around me, just like I had earlier that week at Yom Kippur services, praying in unison with 200 other people hoping for to be inscribed in the Facebook of life. Like I had two weeks prior in Central Park with 5,000 others majestically racing to find a cure. Like I did every week at my support group with 12 extraordinary women searching for a meaning in our illness. I shared a personal moment of faith with a thousand strangers as we shared a piece of tough city concrete even before the Pope went by.